Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. I'm lover boy Timothy Flowers. And I'm Dash and Chris Ringrose, and we are the sexiest tag team professional wrestling, the Brothers of Seduction. And you're listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. Welcome back to another Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast, the Spotlight Edition. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez, and this on the Spotlight Editions of Can Crushers. If you're new to us, we love spotlighting independent stars from all over the world. We are international. We just don't brag about it. Four international. Hell, Toronto listens to us the most. So shout out to Toronto. We love you all. Can't crush your nation. We really do. I'm in a weird mood. I don't know why. I really don't. I know my guest, though, is the newest member of the Coda brand. And you've heard the last couple episodes we've been talking to all the Coda members to find out what it means to be part of the Coda. We'll get to that with Mr. D.L. Hartley. Mr. 325 from the 325, the big boy from the big country. We'll get to all that with him. But I also want to know why he got into wrestling and what makes it tick and what he nerds out about and just some cool stuff about him because I've watched some matches and, man, this man can move. He can move. So we'll get into all of that. Why is he like Malik? You know, he, he's got to be tied in with Malik. Why is he like Malik? I love Malik. But why is he like him? What, what's going on with these guys? So we're going to dive into all of that with Mr. D.L. Hartley here real soon. But, of course, we have to pay the bills. And we get that out of the way fast because then we know that you love enjoying what's coming up on Can Crusher, especially the Spotlight Editions. So let's dive into it right now. Collar and elbow. Hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and the hooligans have down at collar and elbow, buy it all up. Shirts that are inspired by Macho Man with Al Snow and Head on it. A Dusty Rhodes inspired shirt. Tribute shirts to Animal, Shad Gaspar, and more. Just buy those all up. The, the, the material of these shirts are unbelievable. I've had them for years, and they just don't, they don't go bad. They really don't. They're great shirts. They're amazing. Use our promo code when you buy all this stuff. It's Can Crushers. It's that simple. Can Crushers. Capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers. All one word, smash it together, and you'll save 10%. Also, if you're looking for the new LA Night shirt, the new Rock shirt, the uh, Mommy shirt, anything from WWEshot.com, go ahead and use our affiliate code. It is in our show notes, so you'll be able to use that. And we're very transparent on the show. Sometimes you'll get a discount, sometimes you won't. If you know you're going to buy something, Easter's right around the corner, maybe the birthday, or maybe you're buying way early for Christmas. My God, don't don't start talking about Christmas yet. Please don't start talking about Christmas. But whatever you're buying it for, just for yourself, you know you want to help out Can Crushers use our affiliate code. That would mean so much. Thank you very much. Guys, don't forget, <clears throat> as I choke... I'm living off a of W right now. I really am. This energy drink has done wonders for me. Uh, I'm not drinking anything out of the can. You guys know I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but you know everything that the can does. It's carbonated. It's fizzy, yada, 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 all this other extra stuff in it. W doesn't have that. You take water out of your spigot or bottle or whatever, throw in some powder, shake it up, and you're good to go. And listen, I'm up early in the morning. I really am. And this keeps me going the whole day. Two scoops with 20 ounces of water, bing, bang, boom, I'm ready to go. No carbonation, no funny colors, no calories, no added this, no added that. It is just <sighs> beach and peach and beach and peach is just amazing. So check out Dubby 
and buy all their stuff as well. There's a sample pack if you want to try it first, and you'll get 10% off of that with our promo code. Or if you continue to love it, buy the buy in bulk like I do now and save 10% with our promo code CANCRUSHERS. Mark, where can we listen to you at? Well, you're listening to us on your favorite app right now, which could be Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes. The list goes on and on. Anywhere you can find podcasts. My God, words are hard today. Podcasts is where we're going to be. We're also on kind of my favorite one right now is Podurama. And it's seamless. I'm listening to my favorites in the garbage truck. And then I come home and I'm doing some editing and stuff. So I'll slap it on my laptop. It just transitions. Boom, 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 boom. And wherever you left off from where you're listening will just carry over with you. It's really cool. And right now, if you sign up with Podurama, it's an app available on iTunes and, and the Google Store. Um, not iTunes. It would be iShop or whatever it is anymore. I don't even know what the apps are called anymore on Apple and Google. But nonetheless, wherever you find your apps, it's there. Sign up. You'll save 50%. Uh, tell them Can Crusher sent you, and it's really cool. Join the conversations on Facebook, Instagram, and X. We always got something going on in there. It's really cool. And if you'd like your own spotlight, this is the wrestlers listening to Mr. Dio Hartley's interview. You can you can be in part of this. Wrestler, promoter, valet, manager, referee, whatever. We love to hear your story. We love to do a little promotion with you as well. Reach out to us on any of our DMs or cancrusher69 at gmail.com. I've spoken enough. Here comes Al Snow to tell you more about Collar and Elbow. And then we're going to dive into this interview with Mr. D.L. Hartley. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow. The wrestling brand. This is Donny Bambino, one half of the Bad Fellas, and you're listening to Cam Crushers. I don't know how you're listening to it, but I'll tell you what: you better leave a five star, or I'll come visit you, and you don't want me knocking at your door. Welcome back to Cam Crushers, folks. You heard how excited I am to talk to this. Big boy. He is a big boy from a big country. He's Mr. 325 from the 325, D.L. Hartley. D.L., how are you doing tonight, my friend? Hey, what up, what up, bro? What up, bro? What up, Hey, How you doing? How you doing? I am excited to be here. You, you, you really are. It's not like you've done some of that W that we uh, we send out there for energy. You are on fire tonight, and it's awesome. I, this is what whoa, I need. Whoa. Well, you see what happened is I just got a good little pop 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 going on because uh, I listen to my uh, my pop pop music whenever I'm in the gym. Uh, so I'm still hype. I'm still good. I'm still good to go. I need to do that before you're getting on the can crush. Just need to get the hype. Right. Oh, God. I, I may have pegged you. I may have pegged you when I say, who are you? So we'll, we'll hold it. We'll hold it. Um, how's everything and all of that before we get into the hard, you know, taxing questions? Oh, everything good. Everything's cool over here. Uh, I just got done at uh, NTW, North Texas Wrestling. Uh, had a show yesterday uh, on, on the weekend for February 18th. Um, I know this is going out on Wednesday, but I am the number one contender for Kane Carter's United States Championship. <laughs> I'm so excited because, I mean, I always support the boys. I'm not going to act like I don't know these people. I don't know I like these people. I like Kane Carter. I like what he does. But I'm collecting gold all over the place, and uh, I'm going to make that USA 325 real soon. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. But you have something else big that's essentially recently, I'll put it that way, that's just happened, and you are the newest member of the Coda brand, and I'm still knocking at the door to get in. 
Hey, I was I was I was waiting for a little bit. So what up? What up? What up, Coda? Shout out to Coda. Shout out to to everybody over the Coda brand. I whenever I first met Cam, uh, I was like, okay, this 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 guy's got something. And then I saw him with Malik and Neil at NCWO. That's when I really got uh, met meet them. And they were they were a little like, who's this kid coming from Texas? Who's this kid coming from three two five? Like who is this? Um. Saw one match with me, and that was against Jay Sose and CWO. And they were like, oh, yeah, we, we, we mess with you. I'm like, okay, cool. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Uh, Cappuccino Jones, he, he, um, he, I don't know yet. I don't know. He, he's, he's iffy. I like him, but I don't know if he like me because, like, my drink of preference is sweet tea uh, with a little bit of lemonade. And I don't, I don't think he like that very much. But everybody at the Coda brand, real good boys. Uh, have a good time whenever we're with them. Uh, have a, have a podcast out for for my initiation, uh, where we had where we did some wings and things, and it kind of took over social media for like twenty four hours, and it was it was a blast. Oh, we'll wrap back around to that because I told you I don't do a lot of homework, but when it takes over social media, I have to notice it. <laughs> I, I have to notice it. So, listen, spoiler: everybody knows everybody's running through the Coda brand here on Can Crushers, uh, and Cappuccino Jones is next week. I might have a beef with him too. He doesn't like sweet tea and lemonade. What is I, wrong I, I with him? He doesn't like it. He just doesn't like that I don't like. You know, I, I like coffee, but it's not my go-to drink. It's always an Arnold Palmer. Um, I do like cappuccino. I do like cold brews, but that's not my my top. It's not my top. It's maybe like three because I mean that strawberry Dr Pep. That's a good one too. Uh, but I just don't think that uh, I don't think he likes that my number one choice isn't you know coffee. We we get along so well. We've been talking for about five minutes, and listen, I don't know about the strawberry Dr. Pep. It's it's no. in and around. It's not number two. It's you know I I really am a Gatorade fan, but Arnold Palmer's Gatorade. I I don't mind coffee, but it's got to be cold. I you know I mean outside it's got to be cold. I'm not drinking coffee in the middle of summer when it's 900 degrees outside. It no. just doesn't make sense. I understand. I understand. But But. all right. Well, I'm going to get a lot of hate next week from Cappuccino Jones. So nonetheless, (laughs) we'll move along and we'll take uh, care of the host, the the guest that's on right now, DL Hartley. DL, tell me how you got introduced to professional wrestling. Mom, dad, Aunt Sally, Uncle Joe. Like, what crazy family member said, hey, this is your thing? Um, Everybody. Um, (laughs) I. I am half Hispanic, so I come from a Hispanic household. Um, I was raised Hispanic my entire life. Um, my family is all about pro wrestling and cowboys. Uh, hashtag we did boys. So whenever I um, started growing up, it really started, you know, having my memories that unlocked at like five. Um, one of the first matches that I saw was uh, when Mankind came out. And he was on Mankind and Dude Love and Cactus Jack, Mick Foley. Everybody was on the screen. And I was like, what is this? It's the same dude that's on the screen at the same time. I don't know what's going on. Don't know what's happening. So uh, that, that caught my attention. I sat there and then we came on and just threw that trash can. I'm like, all right, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good right there. And so I just watched it every day. Um, my cousins were like crazy about it. They'll just yell at the screen. I'm just like, what's they're 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 being mean. Why are you yelling at them? And then they're cheering for the bad guy. And I'm like, what's what's happening? So it's always on. So anytime I hear somebody screaming, it's how the football wrestling. So of course, me growing up with a lot of cousins, we're doing all the moves on the outside, on the trampoline, on on mattresses uh, in the side. We're breaking things with my grandma and my grandpa, and we get trouble, put in time out, but we still watch wrestling. Um it really wasn't until um, 2020 that I started wanting to become a wrestler. Always been a fan, always watching it. Sundays, I got two TVs. I had I bought an extra TV so I could watch pay-per-views on Sundays and wrestling uh, football. And Monday Night Raw, Monday. Um, 2020 hit, COVID hit. Um, Dreams right down the drain. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> uh, so a little backtrack. I have always been an extracurricular athlete. I was in football. Uh, basketball. I did baseball for a year. I did track for all four years in high school. I did semi-pro flag football. Uh, I was in band for 12 years, marching band. So that was very, very uh, taxing. And then I also did ballet for three years. So 
I was always doing something outside of my schoolwork or my actual work. And this was the first time I didn't have anything going on. I had been out of college for about five years and I didn't have anything going on. So I saw a seminar in Abilene for pro wrestling. And I'm like, okay, this is fun. This is going to be nice. And so I just show up. I was like, okay, I want to do this. I don't want to go take boxing classes. I don't want to go take MMA classes. I don't want to go do cycling class. I want to do something fun that gets my, that gets my body going, gets my mind working. And so when I got there and I saw the ring, I was like, oh, this is, this is legit, legit. So I get in there and there's a lot of talent out there. Uh, shout out to Connor Murphy. Uh, Connor Murphy was the one that was there. He was from Abilene. Uh, and he saw something in me whenever we were just doing drills and we were just running doing cardio stuff. And he came up to me and said, Hey, how you doing? Connor Murphy. I can't do the Irish accent. So I'm not going no, to I, I couldn't imagine. No, no. Uh, but, uh, he was like, Hey, uh, you have some, uh, I train at rampage wrestling in Lubbock, Texas. Do you want to get in the car and go with me? And I said, uh, yeah. So from Abilene to Lubbock, it's two and a half hours, 162 and a half miles. So we get up at, Five o'clock in the morning, get on the road at six, get there by nine, and we have training for about four or five hours every Saturday for about two years. And during that time, I learned the ways of uh, just professional wrestling as a whole from the independent scene. Um, We had some seminars come in. We had uh, a lot of people coming in from the Rampage Dojo that were on shows, and I did security for a little bit, and then I was going to do ring announcing, but Eric Grace and the trainer over there was like, no, nah, you're too big for that. I'm like, okay, what am I ref? And he goes, no, nah, you're too big for that. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to be security. So it wasn't until uh, March 6, 2021, I had my first match with Max Franchise, Rampage Wrestling. Uh, as soon as I had my first match, I was like, this is going to be the career that I have going forward. And I've had it pretty good in my life. Um, there wasn't really uh, an influence that made me like wrestling save my life, but it wasn't until 2022 at the end of 2022, I was, I didn't know where I was going. I was lost um, mentally, emotionally with a lot of things going on personally. And I didn't know what was going on, what was going to happen. And then I talked to a close friend, Phil Noir, uh, shout out to Phil. Nice. and he wanted me to come out to MPX. They had open training. Uh, MPX Metroplex Wrestling in Bedford. I said, okay. So I went there and it was great. It was nice. It was very challenging. Uh, Athena and Matthew Palmer, the head trainers over there. Um, so it was very vigorous, like very PC, very performance center heavy uh, because Athena's been there. Right. But they, they pushed me to be like, oh man, if I'm really going to get to the next level, I need to do this. So for every Monday, for uh, I say every, uh, every Monday, probably. 80% of Mondays I would travel from Abilene to Bedford after working an eight hour shift, traveling two and a half hours, training for three hours, traveling two and a half hours back. I did that almost every Monday for about six months before I got booked on MPX. And as soon as that happened, uh, I got the exposure that I needed. I got the, uh, match that I wanted for Kari Wright. Kari Wright's doing big things. So shout out to Kari for giving me my first MPX match. And everything's been going well from there. And I'm really glad I didn't give up on myself because right now I'm having a hell of a lot of fun. I'm meeting all of these good boys, all of these good uh, characters, all of these good people in wrestling. And I didn't really have that exposure to that many good people, good, like just human beings in general that care about people and care about the world before I got into pro wrestling. So um, I'm really glad I didn't give up on that. And that's kind of where my story starts is, is, I want to say 2020, but really 2022 at the end saying like, Hey man, I'm, I'm about to be out. I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be in wrestling. I don't even want to just a lot of dark thoughts, but in that aspect, wrestling did save my life. MPX saved my life. So much to unpack because you just did my whole questionnaire, which is amazing because I know that you listened and you know, I was going to ask all those and I did you, they want to hear you, not me. But let me unpack some of this. So I really am intrigued and I I am not poking fun because I know this has something to do with your wrestling experience. Talk about the ballet and what it actually helped in wrestling for you. That's going to be fun. So in college, I had uh, there were there were just these uh, this this curriculum to get you some credits. You can do some fun things, some some extracurricular fun things. I golf. And one of those things was folk dance. Right. Polka. Oh, 
I would love that. Sorry, this is your story, not so, mine. <laughs> so, so folk, folk dance was good, and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna go to folk dance. Well, in the same studio that like country dancing, folk dancing, waltz, country dance, all that, just you know, just general dancing. There was a hip hop class, and I said, okay, this hip hop class is gonna be pretty good. So I sit in on it, and uh, Claude Claude Williams was the head director there. And he was like, hey, big man, what you doing? I was like, oh, just watching. He's like, you want to dance a little bit? I said, yeah, let's dance a little bit. So did did the one hip-hop class and was hooked on it, but uh, I couldn't really pay for it. The first one was free, and then I talked to the, the director, and I was like, hey, uh, how much is this? And they told me, I said, uh, no, 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 this is a one-time thing. Well, then they said, I'll get you a deal. If you can make ballet two times a week and help with the class, then you can take hip hop for free. So I was like, all right, time to get my twinkle toes on and start doing some ballet. So uh, I did that. I had three classes of dance, so one hip hop, two ballet per week. Uh, I was in a ballet um, rendition of Beauty and the Beast and the Nutcracker. This sounds those are my so fun. I this sounds I so beat, fun. And I was the rap king, so it was fun. Um, but like the hip hop class, we did hip hop contemporary. Um, very very modernized like emotional dance um uh, and i didn't do tap i tried to do tap it didn't work i wasn't tap i wasn't tap 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 a ruin but uh i had a really good time well with with me having that experience really made me more agile on my feet really made me uh more into like body control and i didn't realize how important that was at wrestling until i started doing these things out of just it was just instinct you know just some some twirling some especially my car wheel some people have called it the heart wheel, but it's the heart wheel is my is my mainstay. I'll say that's my signature move. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's uh, whenever they see something like that, they're like, "How you do that?" I was like, "Belly." And and okay, let's let's just throw that. Let's that. That's the elephant in the room. Uh, whenever people say wrestling ain't ballet, ballet ain't wrestling. Okay, it's it's a big old thing. Ballet is not easy for wrestlers. Wrestlers ain't even for ballet. But I got both experience, and I know some wrestlers out there have experience for both. And so whenever somebody says that, I'm like, "What's wrong, with ballet?" Cause that's hard too. Cause I did it. Um, but that's kind of what contributed to, uh, how I am and who I am in the ring is, is a lot of the experience from ballet. Um, just, I don't, I don't, I like to hide behind any barriers, any characters. Uh, when you see me, it's, it, there's no gimmick. There's no, there's no barriers on it. I'm just me hundred percent, 110%, uh, 110.325%. If you want to be that way, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. It, it's, it's just really, it really boils down to all of my experiences growing up, even in college, outside of college, just portraying who I am. And it's just little bitty snippets of making me who I am. So. I was going to save this till later, just from videos and everything that I did watch, but you are thoroughly enjoying yourself. I mean, titles and this and that and everything, but what you're doing in wrestling right now, you're just, you're having fun and running amok, right? Yes, and it's and sometimes it gets downplayed a lot because uh, I a lot of people and a lot of boys that I respect highly are doing this to uh, further their career. This is their life. This is their livelihood. They want to make it to the E. They want to make it out there. They want to make it to New Japan. They want this more than anything, and I do too. And I don't downplay everybody else that does it, but. I have a backup plan. I have something that helps me out, that helps me get to the drives, that helps me get to these shows. And I don't have really the stressors to, um, I don't have to worry about where my next meal is. I'm very blessed in that aspect. And it's because of my hard work and dedication to my career outside of wrestling. And I respect and have the highest admiration for those that do struggle a little bit, that do need that extra piece of mirth, that do need that extra pay and go 110% in the ring as hard as they can because they are fighting for their life. And I can be blessed to say that I don't have that trouble. And so whenever I'm not able to focus on that, I'm able to be me and I'm able to have fun and I'm able to do this for myself, for the fans. Performing for the fans uh, is, is what I love anything getting the crowd and like even when i try to be mean a little bit it doesn't work because i like to test them i like to test them and see like hmm, do you really like me or is it just because you like the character and no, all they really like me so um i've gotten a lot of bad tastes in people's mouths because again they're fighting for their lives and it seems like i'm making fun of it or the light of the situation i'm not all of us are in pro wrestling for a different reason and the very first reason on why we became pro wrestlers in the first race is being a fan and if I can portray that into the crowd and have them 
wherever they're going in life or they had troubles, trials, tribulations, or they needed something new to do, if they can get into the business and respect the business and have just as much as fun as I can and then make it to that next level, then that's what I want to do for them. That's and I am having well a great time. Said. I'm running that, butt. So that is out. well said. <laughs> Uh, still unpacking. <clears throat> I want to know more. I know you, you fell in love with Mick Foley. We'll just say that in all three faces of them. But what other what other people did you kind of like transition to that you're like, oh, my God, this person doing this is awesome? Uh, Keith Lee. Um, so um, <laughs> I, uh, when I started watching more WCW and WWE when the war was going on, I think it was like dying down. And I was looking at the history of it and reruns because we had the, the VHS – Yes. Uh, the t- um, the, tape swapping. Know, the, oh, yeah. New boy. Uh, um, 46. VHS. Yeah. Yeah. The, those, those new boys out there listening, you don't know what VHS is. Look that up. Uh, we had to, my mom. Love my mom to death. It was just me and her growing up. No siblings. Um, she would hate that I had the, the VCR on all the whole time. So I put duct, I love, put not duct tape, but the uh, electrical tape over the lights. And pushed the VCR back. And I was like, all right, I got to record raw right now. <laughs> so we're going to put a tape in. I was like, hey, mom, man, you you make that delicious dinner that I like so much. you like, I like salmon patties. Can you make those? Oh, yeah, so I'll, I'll make you some. All right, so when you make it some, I'll put that VHS tape in and press record right at 7 o'clock. And I'm like, all right, let's go. So then I'm just kissing her ass the whole time. And I'm like, hey, mom, I'm going to go play in my room. You can sit here and watch Lifetime. I don't have to watch wrestling tonight. And then so I got all the wrestling tapes. And then my mom got upset because I recorded over some of her movies and some of her telenovelas. So uh, she, she went to Abby with me. But um, I think I, there's still some some wrestling tapes back in, the, back in the storage. But, I mean, you can look those up anytime now with, with Peacock and, and the Internet. Um, but... We had Dusty Rhodes. That was really one of the most charismatic people I've ever seen. Um, and it was different because he didn't look like a pro wrestler. Quote, unquote, didn't look like a wrestler. And I don't look like a wrestler, apparently, to the guys out there that hate on me. I don't look like a wrestler. But um, then we had Earthquake and uh, Typhoon. Yep. Uh, they, uh, the, it was – that was different. That was a really – everybody wants to talk about the Hardys and the Dudley boys. Yeah, shout out to them. But – you didn't really have the big tag team. So then I was like, Jamal and Rosie, three minute warning, all these big boys coming out. And then Kane doing things that Kane don't do. Talk, everybody talks about the Undertaker till the, the sky is purple. It's fine. But Kane really did some out of nowhere stuff. Um, Mark Henry was uh, definitely one of those. I'm just going to show up and do my thing and leave. Uh, I mean, if, if Stonewall was a little bit, Stonewall Remsen, if he was a little bit uh, bigger, broader, wider, Mark Henry would be the Stonewall is Mark Henry 2.0. Yeah. Um, but once I saw Ring of Honor and once I saw Keith Lee, I knew that if Keith Lee can do all the things that Keith Lee does, then I could do it if I wanted to be a pro wrestler. So I started following Keith Lee. And then Keith Lee started uh, introducing me into Samoa Joe and then Kevin Steen, now Kevin Owens, then Sammy Callahan. And I was like, what is happening? Why are these big men, medium sized men, just like they don't really look like your typical professional wrestlers, big, bulky, uh, meaty men? Meaty. I mean, we, we meet in a different way. Right. Uh, but uh, once I started watching them, I was like, okay, if I become a pro wrestler one day, that's what I want to recognize. And then I will throw another one out, The Miz, because I watched the challenges on MTV growing up. Uh, because we had MTV, that was one of the only stations that we had in cable. And watching him immediately be the Miz before he even got yep. to the the WWE, it made me realize that you can already have an idea, you can already have an vision, and if you stick with it and dedicate your craft before even knowing that you really wanted to get to that level, then once you get to that level, yeah, you're gonna have trials and troubles, but if you stick to it and you dedicate yourself to one vision, then it can take you over because look exactly where the myth is. So I already had kind of a, a stigma of who I wanted to be, how I wanted to be before I even got into pro wrestling. It's kind of like, Hey, if I was a wrestler, who would I be? So I'm making all my you know, wrestlers in, in WWE games and 2k games and trying to figure out what kind of music I want to come out to. And just, you know, being a fanboy before I got into business. And then once I got here, it was like, Oh, this is way, th- this ain't easy. This ain't easy at all. Now I got to figure out how I'm going to come out. How do I walk? How do I talk? How do I look? How do I, what are my colors? What am I, uh, 
the parents going to be, how am I going to work the crowd? How am I going to do the kids? Am I going to make the kids laugh? Or am I going to make the kids cry? Are, they, are those going to like me? Are they going to buy my merch? All of this happening within the first show, and then it still is a little difficult. But, like, I can talk about how easy it is to have an idea and a vision to get into the business. But once you're in, you, you need to buckle up for the ride because it doesn't stop. And your mind is always racing for these new ideas and new visions. But as long as, long as you stick to that anchor on why you got here in the first place, then it's going, it's going to take you places. Uh, man, you are killing it. I agree. Let's go back to training. And this is kind of one of the last the training and first match. I know, I mean, I know you said about the first match, but I, I really want to get your like real thoughts on first match. And then did you ever, and I, I probably know the answer to this because you're just, you're always hype. Um, did you ever have that thought in those eight hour car rides, essentially back and forth, doing this, doing that, working? And I I understand all of it. Did you ever have the thought? You're like, holy piss. This is, this is more than I thought. Okay. We'll go to, to training. So, um, start with training and get into the rides, uh, training, um, Getting going there, I think since I had that two and a half hour drive, it really was one of those. Let's get into the mood. Let's get into the mode. And when we get there. All right. We got four or five hours. Let's go hard. Like us, because that was really the only day that I trained. And because we're in, Ab- in Abilene b- between Dallas and Lubbock, right in the middle. And we don't have anything here. So it's either drive or just not deal with it at all. And I wanted to deal with that. I wanted to make those drives. When I was in there, I'm like, this is going to be worth it. This is going to be worth it. This is going to be worth it. That's what I'm saying. Whenever we got to training, it's like, damn, I'm blown up. I'm hurt. I'm sore. I'm going home. But on the drive, I'm just like, man, that was worth it. That was worth it. That was worth it. So and I, that's all it was is this is going to be worth it. And this is worth it. Those were my two things going there and back. And I trained for uh, a good year, a uh, year and two months. Uh, Cause I started training January, 2020. So my first match was March 6, 2021 against Max Franchise. Um, uh, no, it wasn't. I, I didn't know what I know now. And I wish I did because I was trying to go 100 miles a minute, trying to be like, okay, this is my first my first little match, my first going. And it wasn't like an official show. We did like a Rampage Dojo show. It was a very special for the Rampagers, for the fans. Um, it was something special to showcase because we were going through COVID. So we wanted to be very careful. Uh, so we were limiting on like our shows at that time, but, uh, it was really good. Uh, he, Matt took care of me. Uh, we did some fun things because me, we kind of mirror each other in that aspect, especially, um, in our backgrounds. But after the match, I'm like, Hey, Mac, I'm sorry. I was trying to do too much. He goes, yeah, you were it just a little bit. I had to keep up a little bit. I'm like, I'm sorry, Mac. So we had a good laugh at that, but then that kind of really right set the tone of, okay, this is who I need to be. And so anytime I'm on the road now, instead of saying this is worth it and this is going to be worth it, I'm thinking, how can I make it worth it for my opponent? Because I never want to say, Hey man, you're doing too much. Hey, that's still, that's going on with me. That's why I kind of don't do a lot, but when I do, it's something that you don't expect. Right. So now when I'm in the car drives, it's like, how can I make it worth it for my opponent? How can I make it worth it for the booker? How can I make it worth it for the promotion on trying to get me on their show? And I'm thinking those ideas. And then once I start developing who I am as, as a character and as a person, I'm just going there having fun. Now, even some of my opponents, there have been a couple in there that are like, what the hell are you doing? Why, why are you making fun of this? It's like, <laughs> I'm not making fun of this, bro. I'm having fun while also putting you on the damn ground. Um, but then they, they rebuttal back by saying, this is my life and they chop the hell out of me, but it's fine. Uh, but it's all, it's all good and fun. It's all good and fun. Competition competition is 100% what it needs to be as far as far as the story goes. Like you're trying to be better than the bad guy. You're trying to be better than the good guy. You're trying to be just as great as the person that's, that's better than you in there. That's a veteran that has the experience that knows exactly what to do when they get to that level. And in those car rides, it's, it does get a little overwhelming especially whenever you, when things don't go your way or you're in your head about, Hey, I didn't set spot or I wasn't in time or whatever my opponent did. I, I, I screwed everything up whenever he hit me. And that's why he hit me again. He kept hitting me. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but then like when I pushed him off, like, did I, did I piss him off enough? Like, does he like me? Like, I want to be competition. I want to like the guy I'm in there with because I want to dance with him. I want to dance with him a little bit. I want him to like me so that, you know, he can tell the booker, Hey, put, put him back on the show. I don't like him, but put him on the show. And, and I, uh, every time I'm in there, I'm just like, all right, you're across from me. It's competition. We're going to be good. But 
how do I make myself not look like a fool? Because a lot of people don't like me again taking light of pro wrestling and i'm not and again i'll i don't like getting upset about the situation like i understand but it's it's hard for those drives home okay. did i do enough yeah. did the crowd like me? did the promotion like me enough to hire me are they going to blacklist me are they going to blackball me because i said the wrong thing or i didn't say the wrong thing or i didn't go shake everybody's hand or i didn't give everybody a hug or i didn't put ass in seats like it's hard to be seven to eight hours out and to make a fan base uh but shout out to gladiators the the gladiator fans ozark arkansas that's almost eight hours away from me and i do have fans there that show out to that and make those drives worth it but it's new places with that you go that you have to find like a reason to connect and it's very hard and i had it i i'm spoiled as hell i'm spoiled rotten when it comes to mpx rampage gladiator um it's easy because the fans know me and i can show up and i know that i'm going to be welcomed and there's some people that don't like me because they're like i just want blood i just want violence i'm like i'm sorry but um regardless i get a reaction like like me or not, they're watching me. Right. <laughs> That's all I got. The eyes are on me. You could either pay for a ticket, you could boo me, you could cheer me, whatever. Eyes are on me. Thank you. That's all I need. Just eyes. Um Yeah, you're putting but, asses in seats, as Ricky Morton said. You said right, it a minute I'm, earlier. Yeah, I'm trying, yeah. And I'm trying to do more, but whenever that doesn't happen, those rides are anxiety ridden. They get inside your head mentally. It's like now I gotta now I gotta figure out like why am I not enough? Why is what I'm doing not working? Why am I the problem? And it's always me, me, me. Like you're putting so much blame on yourself. And it's not until you have to settle down and ground yourself and really like sit and think, okay, maybe it was a bad night. Maybe the crowd just didn't like what was doing at the time. Doesn't mean that they don't like me. Maybe they wanted something else. Maybe they wanted more violence. Maybe they wanted tables, letters, and chairs. Maybe they wanted somebody to get cut. I don't know. But, like, maybe they weren't there for me, and they don't have to be there for me. And it's really one of those humbling experiences where, okay, the show is not catered around me. I am a part of the show. I'm a part of something bigger. And if a fan doesn't like me, then that's not the end of the world. If I get booed, I'm not supposed to be cheered. That's not the end of the world. The end of the world is not being in this business and being like, hey, we don't want you here. Okay, bye. You're not doing enough. But I can't be so hard on myself when it gets to the aspect of am I doing enough for pro wrestling? Because I want to do as much for this company, as much for the, the business as it's done for me. And whenever I don't feel like doing that, man, it takes a toll. Yeah. I, I, I get it. I really do. Because heart and soul into it, do this, do that. And then one, one night, one night could, you know, like, yeah, I'm done. But it wasn't, to, to be snisky, it wasn't your fault. Maybe it was, maybe the crowd was just having a bad night. I'll throw the blame on the crowd. It's not DL is saying it. Maybe the crowd was having a bad night. Maybe it was raining outside. Maybe you had some of the arthritis that was bothering. It, it's not yeah. always you, so you can't take the blame. But you said one word that fills my head all the time anxiety trust me i understand that because it is only you that caused the rain the arthritis the crowd then i completely understand it it's the wrestling business in general though oh yeah and and it shouldn't be something like i i haven't been kind to those uh in my past that have had um those anxiety episodes those panic uh attacks those manic episodes and that those depression uh waves because i didn't understand it and I hate that I didn't understand it because those people deserve so much better. They deserve to be listened to, to have that option of, hey, do you want a distraction? Do you want a suggestion or you just want me to listen? But I'd always play it off. And it it wasn't until I started developing my own anxiety and my own depressions to get to that point where I was like, man, I wish somebody would hear me. I wish somebody would understand me. And then again my my anxiety talking about my anxiety it's like yeah you deserve this You're, it's karma for for you not listening to others it's karma for you treating that person bad it's karma for not listening to that person but uh therapy is great guys go to therapy oh therapy um, is amazing i will wave um, that flag all the time i uh it's it was right and uh like it, it's it's expensive for a reason and it's expensive because it helps and it's expensive because it works. And a lot of people say they can't afford it. There's, there's programs out there that will even listen to you just for one session and try to get you a game plan on going and take payments. But you have to find 
that avenue. You have to, you can't give up after one. Like I went to two local therapists around the, the big country area and one outside the big country. And it just wasn't for me because I didn't feel like I was catered to. And then I was kind of just downplayed, like in a, in a spectrum of, hey, you're a part of this group. And it wasn't until I went to uh, online, online therapy really set me with somebody who listened to me and they didn't care about the money. They didn't care about the tips. They didn't care about why they were in the profession. They cared about me. And they asked me like, Hey, what do we need to do for you to get you on the right track? And I did about 30 weeks of it. So I'm, I'm, I'm in debt because of therapy, but it's worth it. It was so, it was so worth it because again, now I don't have those, those episodes of, did I do enough so much? I still have them, but not fulfilling my head, not having the darkness. And I still have some episodes, but again, if I didn't have those grounding techniques, those ther- therapeutic techniques, those safe spaces, those, uh, those breathing exercises, like all of those things help me get to a, a sense of peace. And regardless of like what happens in this business, cause people are going to talk, people are not going to like you. People are going to have unbiased opinions. People are going to hear through the grapevine about you because maybe somebody doesn't like you or like that you're here, you're taking their spot or whatever. But if it's, if, if it's, if it's detrimental to your peace, it's not worth the risk. Like the, your yeah. health, your emotional peace, that is what's worth it. And I struggle a lot. Like even recently I've had doubts on, on a lot with myself, but somebody, uh, somebody told me it's not worth, it's not worth your peace. If it's not worth your peace, it's just like barking in a distance. Like that's all it is. It's just barking. Just leave it alone. The barking will go away. And it did. And because it's just, you have to find your peace within this business and you have to find your safe space. Like driving, I used to hate it. And now it's kind of my haven. I don't really drive with the boys uh, because like I have to have control of the road because I, I get car sick apparently when I'm in the back because I threw up like one time when I was on the on the trip. I was like, I don't know what it is, but I need to be driving. I will drive for 10 hours if I have to. Um, on a, for a stint with uh, Stonewall Remsen and Mac the Franchise, I drove for a whole, I think, 12 hours to like three different areas. We went from uh, Texarkana to uh, West Memphis to, oh, man, another area south of Arkansas. But then we came back around to Texarkana. It was like a 12-hour round trip. I was like, Stonewall, I, I drove all of that time. I was good. I wasn't sick. And he was like, hey, man, I'm glad you did that. That means I got to sleep. So, <laughs> Uh, I can I can do those I can do those things now because I have those techniques and uh, I know a lot of people dismiss therapy to say that there's something wrong with them they don't want to know that something's wrong with them they don't want to think that they need help or that they need a professional to tell them that they're wrong uh, but you do because if you don't have that then you're never going to grow and you're never going to advance not even in in not only in wrestling or your career but like personally as well yeah in life that's great advice that yeah. that's the best yeah. advice that will ever be heard on can crushers besides what kind of beers we like on Saturdays or anything like that. But that is the best advice ever given on can crushers because yes, we're talking professional wrestling, but life in general, just let it clear your mind. Let it just, I I love the, it's not worth your piece. I love that. So that's essentially what this episode is going to be about. Let's get back to wrestling now. And here's yes, he, I, I, I want to no like, no hey, no I, all over the place. <laughs> I love no trust me. Well, first and foremost, this is your this is your show right now. I'm just here being an idiot. Besides that, um, yeah, let's get to wrestling. All right, wrestling, wrestling. I I have three people that I'm going to compare you to, and let me know how close when I say who is DL Hartley. And I know you said you're you times a million and a half point three two five. Yeah, yada yada yada. But when I see you in the ring from the matches I watch, the big men that can move, and I, there's a million, not a million, but I'm saying Bam Bam, Vader, Bronson Reed, Keith Lee, all on my list. I also put Shane Taylor there. So I see that as your big man. I have Dusty because you have that that charisma, and I took Dusty as the charisma. My third one, because you got some swagger, too. You know, I, I charisma and swagger on Can't Crush is a little bit different. I have D'Lo for you because you just have that little bit of a shimmy and a shake that I'm like, oh, god damn. Okay. <laughs> so, I've never been compared to D'Lo before. That's nice. Yeah. How close? The same initial, too. Well, yeah, duh. <laughs> How close am I? You've named all the big men. So we can throw out right. Keith and da 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 because we completely understand he's your boy toy. Yes. But. And, and Dusty too. Uh, so, are you all right with D- D-Lo, I guess then? Uh, honestly, yeah. Because like you are, I, I D-Lo 
doesn't get a lot of credit because all he cares about, all people care about is his head shake, his entrance. But again, he's not even in the ring yet, and you're talking about him. He's yeah. not even doing any moves, and you're talking about you got you messing with the real deal now. Like you're like still immediately the head shakes, the shimmies before he even does anything. You're talking about him. He has your attention. So it doesn't matter what he does in the ring. You're already watching him. Right. So yeah, one hundred percent. I didn't even didn't even thought to jump in my head until you said that, and then everything started clicking. Yeah. But yeah, one hundred percent for the week, guys. One hundred percent for the week. Thank you for that. All right, let's take some time away from wrestling now and do some nerd stuff. Like, what are you? You're not wrestling. You're not doing your shoot job. You know, what do you like to nerd out about? And I can yeah. only imagine some of this is going to blow my mind. So go ahead. Yeah. All right. So uh, I was just talking to a fan, uh, one of the fan boys, uh, fan buddy. Was on the, also, disclaimer, boys is buddies on the independent scene or buddies on the indies. Right. And the I is lowercase because I am just a part of the boys. So whenever I talk boys, it's gender neutral across the way. So the fan boys, one of them is Chris Hicks. And every time he talks to me, I'm doing something different. Like he, he was like, Hey, what you doing, man? I was like, I'm juggling. He's like juggling. I was like, yeah, he's like life. I was like, no, I have juggling balls and I'm juggling. <laughs> he's like, why? I was like, because I need something to do. And he's like, well, why do you need something to do? I was like, well, I was playing guitar here earlier and I got past some of the songs and he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I play guitar. Well, it's clone hero on the PC, but I was like, I got nothing else to do. Like, I don't want to really, you know, do anything else. So I'm just kind of chilling. He goes, what are you, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just chilling, chilling, thrilling, killing is what I like to say. I just got a hoodie that just said chilling, thrilling, killing. So, um, he, it's, it's funny because anytime that happens, he's like, you can just do everything. So I'm just like, I, I don't really do everything, but let me go some background at you. <clears throat> Growing up, small town, uh, I had no siblings, so I had all my friends. So I played soccer for a little bit. Uh, I got on my neighbor's nerves because we were hitting the ball into her fence and she put barbed wire up on the fence. Sweet. Uh, How many balls did you have to buy every she, week? She, she's she was not a good lady she's not uh, around anymore uh rip but uh, um we did that we were doing uh trampoline uh just uh wrestling on trampoline with each other but then we would go in and play Yu-Gi-Oh! and we would go in and play pokemon and we would go in and play uh this this game called tomba and that's what my shirt one of my shirts is yep. based off of tomba is because I went to go rent a video game, uh, SmackDown, for the PlayStation, and they were just like, hey, we're giving this a game away for free. Why don't you just do that? I'm like, Tomba, cool. So whenever we're playing soccer, we're on the trampoline, we're going to play video games, playing Yu-Gi-Oh, playing, playing Tomba and SmackDown. And so that's all I would be doing, and we'd get, we'd get made fun of for it. Um, shout out to Brian Ramos for being a real one since day one. Um, we were just always together. And so whenever we found some groups, that, and whenever we got into high school, I was – in band, but I was also in football. So I was also like going back and forth. And there were some people that didn't like me, uh, which is fine, whatever. But uh, I kind of did it to myself because I was trying to find my way in. I was trying to find my ways. I was trying to branch out. I was trying to do everything there. But um, whenever I got out of college, I really started getting into anime whenever I got into college. And it was, it wasn't until I started watching uh, subbed, because I watched dub for a while for, I can only watch Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon dubbed. I have to, I, it's weird, but everything else is subbed. And once I started getting into that, I started finding my people, I started finding new connections. I started finding people that grew up like me, that grew up kind of like outcast kind of set aside because of what they liked and kind of uh, looked at differently because they, they like listen to the different music or they like to play games instead of read, or they like to go outside instead of stay in and, uh, knit or something like that. Like it's, it, it's really cumbersome whenever you, you think about how much growth you have just by one thing. So mm-hmm. started with anime. Then we started with is comedy metal. It's nano war of steel. If you don't know who nano war of steel is, go check out disco metal and Norwegian reggaeton. Uh, it's, it's comedy metal, but it's fun. And I found some people who like that. So then we connected on that front. And um, whenever Pokemon Go came out, you saw me riding with the crowd. I'm just walking. I'm always swiping on on the Pokemons. And I did some uh, some wrestling games. I always had wrestling games. I actually haven't had any 2K games. Like the last WWE game that I bought was, I think, 
13 whenever Punk wow. is on the cover. Are you buying the new one this year? Uh, I am. I think I am because they're bringing back 40 years of WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do that. But like a Dark Souls is my my shit. Well, I don't know if I can cuss on the You can say whatever you want. Yep. We're always explicit. Oh, I can say I can say whatever I want. Yeah. Okay, shit. All right. So uh <laughs> the 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 Dark Souls um uh, Dark Souls is my shit. Uh I I've hundred percent it all I'll be a nerd. I'll hundred percent it got all the achievements on Dark Souls one, two, three, Bloodborne, and Elden Ring. I didn't I don't mess I don't I don't mess with Sekiro though. But uh, we have that Tony Hawk Pro Skaters uh, one and two just got a remaster, so I played the hell out of that. Um, I got all the consoles. I got my my PlayStation, my Xbox, my my N sixty four, my Super Nintendo, uh, my regular NES. Uh, I got uh, a Wii that I'm trying to uh, mod so I can get all of these games. Yeah. Uh, but I- dabble in some some board games like sorry life monopoly uh we got some i'm just right now i'm just giving you off my shelf we got you uh, are all <laughs> over the place humanity <laughs> phase 10 uno we got aqua family photos categories texas trivia that's hard that's hard like it's really hard but i also have two wrestling games uh the old school smackdown versus raw wwe dvd board game and uh wwe royal rumble card game and those two are really nice but but um, I'm all, I'm all over the place. You want to talk about nerding out? You come over here to my house. We're gonna play some games. We're gonna play some video Sounds games. We're gonna juggle a little bit. We're gonna play some Guitar Hero. We're gonna just be on. But right now, uh, I, I, I've kind of gotten into Fortnite. Now I got uh, into Fortnite. I can't get early. into that yet. This, this is what happened. This is what happened. This is what happened. So. <laughs> I got into Fortnite because I was waiting on PUBG to come out. Um, but PUBG wasn't released yet on the Xbox, so we were playing Fortnite. When the PUBG got on the Xbox, there were a lot of problems. So then we were just like, OG, Fortnite. Uh, and then when it came back recently, I started playing again. Uh, and then my my friend, uh, Mafia Bunny, uh, she was in college with me, one of my best friends for like 12 years now. Um she has a YouTube channel, so we did a we did a little stream there. We, I think we've done two streams so far, Fortnite, and uh, that's what really got me going to where like you know what I'm just gonna start playing whenever I'm not in the gym, whenever I'm chilling. But then you get the haters. Why are you playing video games? Why? All right, why are you reading? All right, why are you playing board games? Hey, why are you watching TV? Well, why are you doing? No, this everybody has their outlet. Like we gotta stop hating on everything. Like it's it's bad. Like reading is is reading is better than video games. Why? Because my hand eye coordination is better than yours. Like <laughs> sorry, <laughs> like sorry. It's like that. And it's like all uh, well knitting is hand straight too. I was like, yeah, I I have people that crochet and they're some of the best people, but they can't uh, do what I can do whenever it comes to team building. Also, video games. You want to talk about workforce and put video games in y'all's resume. This is going to be a uh, we go all over the place on this podcast. Can't all right. We're all over the place on your resume. Don't put that you play video games, but whenever they ask about it. I think whenever you're playing MOBAs and whenever you're playing those team based games and you, you have that area. So like whenever I played Overwatch, I was a maining Lucio, but I was getting all the kills. But I was always supporting, always killing. And we always had a, a really good group. And my four people outside of wrestling that have been around and that have saved me multiple times over and over again. Uh shout out to Joe uh, That was our that's our group name because those are all of our initials together. Um they, we had one person that was, uh, that was heal, that was a healer support. And that person and she is really like a healer in, in a gist. Like we go to her for, uh, just to be grounded. And then we have a dude that's eccentric just as much as I am. And he was DPS. And then we had this big boy also shout out to Josh, the big boy, just as me. He was tank. And I was also like splitting, but whenever we get into that aspect, I am in my job, one of those type of supporters, one of that type, one of those type of, I'm going to take care of you. We got that who is a, uh, one of the members at Lowe's and he's taking care of business because again, he's a tank, he's boss. And then we got, uh, and, uh, we got Caleb. I'm, I'm just going to say, everybody getting their names out today. We got, I'm not uh, tagging all these people, by the way. No, you ain't tagging nobody. <laughs> I will tag them myself. Y'all know what? Y'all could just, you don't got to tag nobody. I'll take care of the tagging. You, we got that. But uh, Caleb's doing his thing. He's got a, he's got a lot of going on with Comic Cons. He's very creative and he's he's doing a lot of things. We we connected on Minecraft. Now, Minecraft, 
I've got my Minecraft ADHD all over. I got a thousand hours of Minecraft. Modern Minecraft is all I got now. Shout out to Scott Della Cremosa for helping me out with Minecraft. I ain't gonna be in the ring with him because I was in the ring with him once. Uh, but he he he's scary. So I'm gonna stay with Minecraft. He ain't as scary as my on Minecraft. But uh, shout out to the MPX crew for for Minecraft and uh, and the the Goblin Squad. And uh, it's uh, we just nerd. You said nerd out. That's what we're doing right now. We uh, are. And we really are. The, and, yeah, and then Ember is uh, uh, another person, part of the group, that healer, that supporter, because she she's all over, uh, all about all about the boys, and just making sure that we are good, making sure we are taken care of. And if she can't really help, uh, let me help a hand. She's going to give some quotes and words of wisdom. So, um, rounding that all the way back out to uh, the boys, the video games, the wrestling, it all takes a place in my life, and I take pride in everything because everything is connected with me, and I have it figured out, and I'm blessed to have it. Figured figured out a lot of a lot of these cats are still trying to find their way and my suggestion to them is y'all gonna find y'all's way you just can't force it you just gotta let things happen everything happens for a reason and i was skeptical about that for so long and i tried i forced things to happen and i i had to make things happen there's a lot of people out there if things don't happen make it happen yeah you can make those happen but you can't force it right you can you can go out there and make something happen but you can't force things to happen and once you start accepting your uh, accepting everything then uh when it comes to wrestling everything's just easier and people just people like to to humble me because like <laughs> there ain't a video out there but la- uh there was a video of me i mean i mean barbecue out the out the out the tin because they were gonna throw away the barbecue brisket at the show and i'm like no nah, i'm gonna eat this so i have my baby face pink hoodie on i have my 325 hat with some glasses i'm just dancing to get low while eating some brisket like i was just chilling through a kill and then somebody took a video of it i'm like oh all right whatever i'm just having a good damn time but there was a comment that saying like how can you not love this guy and i was just like you know that that, that really hits me because like I haven't always been the liked person. I haven't always been the one that wanted to be at the crowd or that wanted to be in the party because I am eccentric. I am extra. Like I, I am, I'm just all over the place because of no shit. Everything. So, sorry. 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 <laughs> y'all. y'all don't have a lot on the concussions, but um, it's really hard because I know people out there that are like that, that kind of, downplay themselves that don't that go to uh people's places that don't want to over accentuate because they don't want to be known as the weird person or be skeptical like why are they here like they so they're the quiet ones they're the reserved ones and those are the people that i will go talk to first anywhere it's just like hey man how you doing everything's gonna be all right you're gonna be all right because i'm out here and uh I like to like kind of put my radiant energy out there so they can vibe and like hey it's okay to be yourself it's okay to be that weird person if they don't like you I'm, I'm gonna say this fuck them yeah uh, <laughs> if they don't because like there are you will find your people you will find your group and some there are some there, there are some people out here that are misconception now you got to be you got to man up a little bit and you got to talk to those people there were there was a recently there was a lot of uh something going on with me personally that i was just like you know what let's just cut to the chase let's go up there let's just have a conversation face to face and get this all squashed out and it got squashed and that's all it is, is you just got to talk and communicate because if not, then you're not going to get the whole story. Um, and that happens with anything, but don't be afraid to be seen. Don't be afraid to go out there. Anxiety is going to help you from that, <laughs> hold you back from that. Like there's going to be like, what if I say the wrong thing? What if they don't want to talk to me? What if they hate me? And I'm just making them want to go talk about me. Like I flip back and forth on caring about what people think. Because sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't give a damn. I'm gonna be three, two, five all day. But then I'm just like, hey, I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do nothing. I don't want you to feel bad for me. I don't yep. wanna do nothing. So <laughs> slapped right but in the face. Uh, but, yeah. but once, once you find your people and you're ex- like accepting, that's why I try to be as accepting as possible as a person, as a wrestler, uh, as like whenever I go talk to the fans, I'll talk to them like they're normal people because they're they're going out there. They don't want to be. <laughs> there's some people that downplay that like, Hey, you're, you're supposed to be larger than life. You're supposed to be the superstar. You're supposed to not give them the high day. Why? why? Why are we not? They're spending money. Why can't, why can't I give this kid the experience of a lifetime by talking to him like a normal person? Why can't I give this man a hug by saying, thank you for bringing your family because no telling what you did to get here. So I'm going to give you a little bit more of my time. Who's to say I can't do that. And I try to be as accepting as possible. Uh, I try to be a safe place. I try to be a person that they can be comfortable in themselves with because I struggled so hard to find that group. And I never want anybody to feel the way I did. 
this has been the year since all the way at the beginning in January. It's only a month, but essentially the very first spotlight we did with uh, Ruby Devlin, she brought out the "Just Be You," and I said, "Oh my God, we're we're going to run with that this year," and we're going to bring the fourth wall down here in a minute. DL, we have not talked about anything. Like I don't know shit about you, right? I, I don't until what you just told me in the last hour or so. But we didn't plan this, and you and I never told you about Ruby Devlin saying that. Nope. This is exactly what we're doing this year. We're just we're telling everybody you be you. You know, yeah. and I like I'm gonna steal yours from the rest of the way too. If it's not worth your piece, don't. You know, it's just that has been the, the every spotlight has had something like that. And I love that you're being you are being like one of the openest about your anxiety and everything like that and how you've battled, yada yada yada. And I'm not I'm yada 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 and yada your battle battle before you punch oh, me yeah, through the phone. But yeah. You're just open, and it's like, guys, this is professional wrestling, too. This is the things that we have to deal with. This is da-da-da-da-da. And it's just okay to be you, be yourself, be open. Thank you is where I'm getting to. And I love oh, you for yeah. telling these stories. Oh, no, thank you so much. All the love to you, too. And it's the reason why big names, WWE, AEW, New Japan, TNA, the reason why they can be there where they are is because there's no doubt that they have gone through probably worse than we have now. Mm -hmm. But they have that solidarity. They have that structure. They know how to deal with it. That's why they are professionals. And we are in the professional wrestling business, but they are the ultimate professionals because of where they're at because they've had to deal with things like this. So why can't we just make it known and just help each other out? And just to get everybody, we're all in this for the same reason, to be successful, to create uh, moments and memories for these fans, to create moments and memories for ourselves. Exactly. And go along this crazy ass journey. You got to be, there's some something, even if it's just 0.325% of you, there's got to be something wrong to be in this business to where you want to get hit and you want to get your back slammed all the time and you want to go through all this shit because we love it. Yeah. And, we, and there's something about it because it doesn't matter if it's cheered or booed. It doesn't matter if it's in front of five people or 500 people. Something about being in that ring signifies something with me just like I does with everybody else in this business. Let's get to the silly questions. Uh, silly, but we have a spotlight question from a past guest. So here it is. Yo, what's up? This is the Prince Romeo Reese. I have a question I have to ask you. And here's my question. Where do you see yourself in five years? Five years. Five years. Let's see. I plan on being 325 pounds. I plan on still being from the 325. I plan on still wheeling and dealing out the ring. Um, I hope to be in more promotions. I hope to be in more states. Um, a lot of people want to get to the top level. I also want to get to that top level. I think... Uh, if I were to have been in this business uh, earlier on, Ring of Honor would have been the destination. I still think Ring of Honor is going to be the destination or TNA because once you get those two, because that's kind of like a stepping stone. You can't just get, hey, I'm going to go to WWE. Nah. Right. As much as I want to be there and AEW, wherever you want to go, you got to get those stepping stones. So hopefully more steps closer to being uh, to being in bigger, bigger steps. Uh, more states, more promotions, still being me, hopefully getting more fans along the way just to get into pro wrestling and just to see like how, what I can push myself to do. And in five years, I hope to be at least half the states uh, overseas and hopefully to be on a, an extra or a dark match on other team or AW or Ring of Honor, whatever. I, all my boys are doing it. All the DFW boys, shout out to everybody from DFW that are on uh on the ring of honors and AEW's on dark match uh but like it's possible it and is. all i gotta all i gotta do is keep trucking i gotta keep trucking along now I, I might have to be a big boy in a different sense because i gotta get my body tv ready and that means like not a lot of wings i can still eat wings because i they ain't gonna mess me up but not as much i still gotta you know my craft i gotta be tv ready and so i hope to be in that aspect uh in in shorter than five years maybe maybe three and a quarter years from now oh my god we get it we get it so you brought up wings five or six or a dozen times so let me ask you this this is going to be my last silly question but screw All it right. we've jumped around what's the quickest you've eaten a dozen wings what's your favorite what's your go-to give me some wing talk 
Okay. You got an hour? <laughs> uh, no. All right. Let me bring it down. So uh, anytime I go to wing places, uh, there's a, there's a, place in Abilene called Chelsea's wings and they have 75 cent wings on Thursdays. And I go out there and I get the lemon pepper wings with ranch and the, uh, spicy Cajun, spicy Cajun, spicy Korean, Asian, something. There is something spicy. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's good. All right. So that's, that's always bone in no matter what. Yes. Uh, those are big old wings. Now, the reason why I'm able to do this one stroke challenge, shout out to Richie Ron for the run stroke and able to get it is because of the way that the wings are cooked because you can't have the wings stick it to the bone. They have to be cooked at a right temperature they have to be hot still you got to clean those off the bone whenever they get it because the the spices and the sauce are good so whenever i go to buffalo Wild wings with the boys when it's late i get spicy garlic but i also get honey barbecue with a side of caramel sauce and a side of margarita salt because then you got to drizzle that caramel on get that salt on there and then once you do that there's a specific way because you can't just you can't just show it around and try to eat it <laughs> Like, it's a feature gotta, doing that on the, on the flats on the flats you gotta you gotta separate the little bones in between you gotta make sure that like you can't be like hey i'm gonna eat you that's what's gonna happen that's why you're put on here but i'm gonna do it okay so you gotta snap that a little bit and then you gotta get the wing off both ends now it doesn't matter if you want to do like the the ninja technique whenever you get both the wing you bite down on it you pull both of them out like swords behind your back both the bones out or the savage technique where you just put it in your mouth and you eat all the wing and then pull out the bones or the one stroke technique where you just put the one in get the little bone and pull it out but the drum is will uh, doesn't get a lot of credit because you can't Eat it fast. No, that's where the savoriness is. That's where a little bit more of the fat is, a little bit more of the dark meat is, is on the drums. And you got to be delicate around that one. So when I go to Wingstop, the drums there are just perfect enough not to like overcrowd and break my jaw whenever I put it in my mouth. But they're really nice there. I get the garlic, garlic parmesan there and the Cajun dry rub there. So those wings are really nice, really neat. But when I go to these new wing places, it's different. Fazoli's has really good wings. Garlic Parmesan wings from Fazoli's. That's great. Boss's Pizza in North Richland Hills. Uh, we got King Roy and Bobo. Those are good sauce. I think King Roy has the like Alfredo sauce, and the other one is like a little tangy. It's good. But there's a there's an Italian place here called Little Italy in Abilene, and they have honey mustard wings, and those are really good. You never thought that wings from an Italian place would be good. Those Not at all. Good. Okay. And then uh, Jake's in Lubbock, Texas, they got the spicy Korean wings. They're really nice. We got a bar here that's a breaker's bar that has Korean barbecue. That's pretty good, too. But everything is all about bone in. And every time there's a wing place, I try to try to get it. Now, the most controversial that I have ever had is Taco Bell whenever they came out with their wings. Because if they got wings, I'm going to try them. They weren't that bad. They weren't the best, but they weren't that bad. You're going to have to try those whenever they come back. But it's always bone in. I don't care if it's flats or drums and I, it's not about how fast you can do something. Like if we want to, if you want to get a little, oh, um, oh, yeah, we're going to get low, get low here in a minute. You, right? You want to get a little bit more than PG 13. It ain't about how fast you can do it. It's how, uh, about how better you can do it, how well you can do it because you ain't trying to get in and get out and go on your way. You are trying to make sure that everything's warmed up, that you got it all complete, that you complete the wing and that you're satisfied whenever you see no more meat on that bone. And then you can just throw the bone out and be like, I did not waste no meat. Now, with that one stroke, I wasn't, like I said, on the, we going to get a little R here. I wasn't going to do wingalingus in front on the damn restaurant because Morgan Mercy want to call me out and have a wing battle on Facebook for a little bit, but it's, it's, it's really good. It's not, it's, it's one of those, Hey, you've been happy before, but you've never been DL hardly eating on a wing happy before. Okay. Whenever you get to that point of happy, then that's when you can be like, I'm satisfied. <laughs> I'm sweating over here. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 you're fans, viewers. I'm sorry. If you made it this far in the podcast, thank y'all so much for being on the ride with me. That's, that'll be, that'll be my thank you because uh, I'm, you wanted the wrestling podcast. You got a life podcast. You did. And we have, we have a couple hard questions coming up, but nothing bad, but all right, two more silly questions and we'll wrap back around besides the Coda brand. Okay. Because we know you're the newest member of the Coda brand. We got, Christ, we have to put them over. This is essentially the reason why you're on this one. But oh, besi absolutely. besides them, what faction yeah. would you like to see yourself in in any era? Oh, Lord. Um, you know, Scum was good in Ring of Honor. <laughs> oh, yes, Scum was. was fun. I, I, I it just only because like how how like how messy can I be? How sloppy can I be as a but still professional? But for being with Scum, that would be good. Uh <laughs> 
I wanted to be a part of Decay for a hot second, just because like Abyss, when Abyss did it, I was like, Abyss is different. This is a different, this is a different area. Cause if Abyss can go to Decay and start getting that little dark and menacing and twisting property, like what can I do? What can I do that? I'm going to do that. Um, it's, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have mind been in a rosebud. A rosebud would have been fantastic if I was a rosebud when Adam Rose coming out just in the yeah. conga line and just doing dances and stuff. That could have been fun. Um, right now I'm putting you in the oddities, but that's no. neither here nor there. <laughs> okay. That's, fine. that's cool. Uh, on the, on the independence right now, Coda Brand. Always Coda Brand. I will, I will rep the, the plays everywhere. I'm not going to be in 14,000 factions, but we're going to do Coda Brand. Uh, if you want to group me with the, with, some some wrestlers as far as the scene goes west texas which doesn't get a lot of love but this is what we're gonna say whenever you see west texas wrestling with rampage wrestling what do you see three to five hundred fans yep. every other month in a venue you can't knock that you can't look at that progress look there ain't shit nah look at the fans look at the crowd and the quality of the production of rampage wrestling shout out to rampage wrestling 100 percent family home second home from home and metroplex wrestling is my third home from home because they saved me look at that production look at that place 150 to 200 fans every week not not every month every week now it's not west texas but if y'all can do that for Rancher Place, y'all can do that for Rampage. Everybody needs to stop hating. Everybody needs to stop with the whole what promotion is better than the promotion. You know what? I worked for 13 promotions last year, and I've already worked for five this year. And I'm going to probably do 20, 25 at the end of the year. You know what's going to be the same aspect? I'm going to love every single promotion that I get there the whole time because I bring the quality, and wrestling is a business for coming together and not so much battles. Yeah. The wars, the dojo wars are great because that showcase is different. That's different. That's whenever you want to broadband like DFW versus everywhere. You got two high quality promotions and schools going bad at that battle and not to showcase. That's not going against each other. That's showcasing all talent. Why can't we do that for all parts of Texas? And I don't know if you, <laughs> you, you over there, you ain't in Texas, but there was this whole spiel on this post about where all the Texas brands are at. And there was a lot of people that were out now. There's hundreds <laughs> of, pro, of uh, promotions around, and oh, some yeah. are high quality, have the caliber, have the networking to be top tier, and they got lower lower levels here that are just starting out. But we just want to be in this business for one thing, and that's for success. Sorry, we get we went around to went to factions and stuff, but I'm that's sorry. Right. You gotta, sorry. Yeah, I'm, Sorry, you're AD, good. You you're know good. what? If you want to put ADHD in the parentheses for this title, <laughs> you can. <laughs> No, it's okay. It's just going to be a wild ride. All right, last silly question, and we'll jump back into some serious one. What's the largest animal that you think you could take down? Hippopotamus. Do you really? Is, is no, this... I don't. <laughs> sorry, Listen. Don't <laughs> sorry, somebody crocheted me a hippopotamus in my colors, uh, purple and gold, uh, purple and pink. So I was like, hippopotamus. Uh, the biggest one that I could take down. Uh <laughs> You know, a kangaroo wouldn't be too bad. Let's let's try a kangaroo. That's gonna hurt a little bit, but I'll say can't, we'll do a kangaroo. Uh, a Great Dane. I've taken down a Great. I've wrestled Great Danes uh, before. That 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 ain't easy. Uh, probably a hog. Maybe a hog. Okay, that's actually Maybe where I thought you were going. In, in probably the, in a hog. The, yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll not a cow because I can't go cow tipping. But uh, why can't you? That's a, fucking amazing. I can. But what am I going to do? It's fine. I got to be in the mood for cow oh. Okay, Got to be in the mood for that. Dad jokes out the ass. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't I didn't mean to milk that. One more? It's going to curdle uh, pretty soon. What, which one? Oh, I mean, if the stakes were higher, then I would probably get another one in there. All right. Serious question of the night. And it, this is, okay. I, I love to hear you guys' you know, thoughts and everything. Wrestling, good, bad, ugly, you know, there, there's a lot of things that happen in wrestling. If you could right. wave your crazy-ass one that you have in your hand right now over wrestling, what would you take out of it to essentially improve it? Production for talent. And I say production across the town. So you have a ring, you have talent, and you have the crowd. Those are the basics for a wrestling show. What makes it an extravagant showcase is the appearance, the posters, the flyers, the graphics, the announcing, the music, the curtains, the uh, portrayal. As soon as you go in, you need to be like the Coliseum. 
King of Sport, I will say King of Sport, shout out to King of Sports. They transform any high school gym into a extravagant showcase for professional wrestling. And it doesn't take a lot to do that. You just need a vision and you need about a hundred hands. <laughs> I'll yeah. say it doesn't take a lot, but you need that vision of what can I do to make those people come through that door to know that they are in a place for competition. They are in a place for showmanship and performance that they are in a place for professional wrestling. Um, I don't know exactly who posted it. It was today. Uh, that's kind of what got it inspired, inspired that question or that answer was just today. Some, there was a post going around about how, uh, there may have been a family that had spent a hundred dollars on gas on dinner on just to drive to come up to a show. When they get there, they need to be knocked off their sock. Their eyes need to go wide. Their jaw needs to drop on. Hey, I am in a place of like, I am at the Coliseum. I am like right. even Roman times. Like I am here to watch battle. I am here to watch performances. I am here to watch competition. I'm here maybe sometimes for somebody to go through something, but it can't just be, I'm just going to go to this one place and sit down and there's going to be wrestling. No, the, the whole sentence needs to be, I'm going to a professional wrestling event, not oh, I'm going to go see some wrestling. No, I am going to this extravagant place. And to do that, it starts something as simple as graphics. Shout out to, to, to Brian, Brian F uh, for doing my stuff and for being all over the place. Shout out to him. But uh, Cam is doing so good with personal, like highlight. He just did something for Michael Rogers, yeah. but he, he wants that. He wants that to showcase that. And all we have to do is contact him, contact the graphic designers, contact them. You don't you know what's going to happen. Even if it's like just 10 to 12 people on a poster and make something go from, Hey, this is wrestling. Like, Oh, this is wrestling. Yep. And it's something simple as that. And that's the first part of it. And then when you go in, if you, even if it's just something as simple as just black curtains or black around the ring, um, gladiator did well with that because there was just black everywhere. So we got rid of the, the backstage antics. We got rid of, we separated from business from church, from state, we separated it. And then as soon as you came out, there's your stage, there's your performance. You have to think about it as theater. You have to think about it as where the crowd is. You're looking up at the stage. The stage has curtains. You're blocking out what's, what's, uh, your crowd is supposed to see and what they need to have their imagination. Like whenever you go to the stage, that's yours. You are performing at that. You are the star of the show. But if you just come out and everybody can see everything, it's lackluster. It's, it is. But if they, if you can leave something to the imagination on how do he come out there? Oh, how'd they get his music? How did they get that smoke going? How'd they get the lights? This is so awesome. This is cool. Ah, like it, that's where you, it, before the, competition even starts yep. before wrestling even starts as the event getting eyes on the product for promoting is needs needs to be better across the whole board and, it, and people that have it down shout out to mpx and rampage uh, shout out to have it down that have those people designated like they have designated graphic designers for their shows uh and i'll say new texas as well new texas pro wrestling again has those personal designers DFW has those personal designers. They, they, they go out of their way to put some money away in their budget to make it look extravagant. And then when you go to these places, it's just as great as you see on a poster. The it's, you never want to go to a movie that you see a poster of, or that you see a trailer of and the trailer and the poster is mediocre, but then you go to the show and you watch the movie and the movie is good. But the movie could be great if you had a great trailer, a great promotion, a great graphic. And when you watch the movie, you are encapsulated in everything just like pro wrestling. I, I couldn't disagree. I, I, yeah, this is this is spot on. I, I've, I've been to shows that are like, oh, they have a ring. I'm going to wrestling tonight. But then I've been to shows that are like, holy shit, I'm in Madison Square Garden in right. – you know, some little ding dong right. town in Pennsylvania. And I can say that because I'm in Pennsylvania. So, yeah. And, yeah. and let me do a sidebar uh, with, with the quote, know your worth, because um, I know that a lot of people just want to go wrestle. I know a lot of people just want to like, I want to go wrestle. I don't care if it's in a bar. I don't care if it's in a parking lot, but you got to look within yourself of what is, what is worth it. What is worth it to you? What is worth your peace? There you go. Go around the yeah. back that let's do that. What is worth it? And putting your, did you just spend 300, $200 on gear just to, you know, wrestle outside in dirt or wrestle on the canvas. Now there's a lot of promotions that can't afford that. 
and I'm not going to knock them, but there are ways that you can improve to get a building. And then there are structured to be cheap. Go to DIY stuff. You know how much my whole house is furnished by dirt, cheap, goodwill and Ollie's like our, our Facebook marketplace. Like, <laughs> like you can find a thing. From the, I don't care. Like I like the most expensive thing I have right now, is probably $30 table. Everything else is like, whatever. Like even my couch is like 50 bucks, whatever, but you can still save some money and still produce something that looks like a million bucks to somebody who doesn't know like the kids, the, the kids, especially like the kids will just come out. You can, they could be a black curtain from, from Goodwill for a dollar and you're putting that around the ring and they'll think, wow, that they're just, that's so nice. That's a nice color. That's a nice color. Black. Oh, there's green in there. Oh, there's yellow in there. There's a lot of colors here. That's going to be great. And exciting. Now the parents are going to be like, what the hell is that doing? But like at the same time, <laughs> You, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pander. You can't pander to everybody in this business. If you pander to everybody in the business, you're going to wear yourself out. You're going to kill yourself over it. And no one's going to be happy. Agreed. Listen, we're scheduling a part two because there's going to be a part two. We we're not going to be able to talk about matches on this show, this, that, or the other, but I want to get two right. more questions in and then give you your okay. time for your own self promotion, which holy shit. I can only imagine how long that's going to, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think I've already uh, look. Listen, if we're being honest, this whole I got the self promotion. I know. All I, know. I gotta say, all I gotta say is three, two, five, big boy slash car will buy. That's it. that's done. That's that's a promote. Okay, let's go. Let's get back down to the to the question. We'll go ahead and do that. I, I want to know your your dream match. I I put some caveats on it, like who, where, in the stipulation. Uh, Keith Lee. Yeah. Regular one on one match, Tokyo Dome. Um. Dream match. Realistic. Keith Lee, the epic wrestle revolver. Done. Okay. You got a dream match with the same person and a realistic match that has actually happened because Keith Lee has performed at the epic. Keith Lee has battled Aaron Eagle, who was a part of MPX, and I'm part of MPX, and wrestle revolver who has ties to MPX. And I was just at wrestle revolver show with the same. So I'm just putting it out there. I don't ask for a lot of things in this business, but if, for some reason, there is an MPX versus Wrestle Revolver show. And for some reason, Keith Lee is open. And for some reason, the Epic that has that can house a thousand people. If that match ever wants to happen, I will take it. I will accept it. <laughs> let's just let's just do that. But um honestly, it's that. And then um indie matches, uh anything Brian Keith in Abilene would be fun. Uh Sam Sam Stackhouse, I would yeah. be the smaller, I would be the huger weight. Not the cruiserweight, the huger weight in that match. Um, most of my dream matches, other than Keith Lee, are people from the indies. Like, I will have a match with Brick Savage on February 24th. And that technically is Ken, one of my dream, dream matches because Brick Savage is <laughs> Brick Savage. But my dream matches aren't out of reach because I do not want to put myself so far on a pedestal that I can't reach my goals and I won't be satisfied and complete with myself. That's why the short term goals are so true to yourself. Like you have to be honest because once you get those goals, then you can branch out for more. You can't take a leap of faith without taking a step up chance. So those are my steps to the, from the dream match of Keith Lee to my actual match with brick savage is on the same spectrum. Rome wasn't built in a day. And I like that you nope. know that in your head. Yeah. Final question. And then wow. we'll, we'll get to the you one more time because I just want to hear you do you one more time. Yeah. If you couldn't make it anymore to this February 24th match in wrestling, as we're talking right now is done. Do you feel accomplished? Are you happy with what you've done? So on mm -hmm. and so forth. I'm content. Um, I don't think I'll ever be completely happy and satisfied uh, 100%. Only because there are some aspects like uh, I will say that for Wichita Falls Wrestling Association, they put on a wrestling show per week for the Texas Oklahoma Fair. I actually don't want to wrestle that show. I want to announce. <laughs> I want to do commentary. I want to like be the showman of, Hey, welcome to wrestling. Like I want to be that. And I want to dabble in that as well. Um, I still want to learn the back ends of how everything is produced from the cameras to the music, to the lighting, to everything in the back. I still don't know all of that. So I want to, I, to be completely satisfied. I want to know just a little bit of 
of a little bit. Like I want to know a little bit of each and every piece of pro wrestling, because if I go to a promotion that needs help, then I can help them. And if I can help them, that's my way of giving back. Hey, your music isn't right. Let me, let me figure out how to do music. Oh, you don't have lights. Let's go buy something real quick. That mimics lights. Oh, you don't have a curtain. Let's go buy a sheet from like Goodwill. Let's go buy a tarp. Even though it doesn't look good, you're still having that aspect of how can we make this better just little by little. And I need to have that knowledge and I need to have that education. So I will be sad that wrestling would be over and done with on February 24th if that were to happen. It's not gonna. So shut yes, up, people. Gonna, it's not gonna. gonna. Let's we knock. You see this wood? We yeah. knocking right there. That's what we knocking on. Okay. But if it's everything is over and said and done with, I would still want to be a part of the business in any way that I can. And if that's not possible, then I will be content with what I have. I will be happy in the moments I've made with my friends forever, with all the boys, with all the aspects, with all the fans. But I'm not going to sit here and be a fool and lie to myself saying, yeah, I'll be happy. No, I'll be I'll be content. We'll, we'll have that word. OK, content. I like content. Yeah, content's probably the best word for a professional wrestler anyway. I, yeah. I really I really do believe that. All right. Again, we are folks that are listening and made it this far. We yeah, are scheduling a part two to talk about matches <laughs> and some more accomplishments and yada, yada, yada about that stuff that's happened in his career. Holy moly. We have to. But we yeah. we I know DL that we could sit here for three more hours and make this a four hour podcast and yeah, about, and then yeah, I'm not going to work and, tomorrow and this that and the other so yeah, I, can, I can give you about three hours and twenty five more minutes if you wanted to but whatever we can... see throw up the softball <laughs> and you hit it boom <laughs> give everybody your socials your merchandise where else are you going to be besides February twenty fourth and all that all right so. Oh. It's the big boy for the big country. Mr. 325 from the 325. Weighing in at 325. Traveling 325 miles. Putting $32.50 in the gas tank anytime I go. I will have a, a beacon soon. And that beacon will have a QR code that will have all the addresses to my socials. But my Instagram is dl.hartley. My Facebook is DL Hartley. Uh, YouTube is at DL Hartley. Um, my booking information is found on those pages. Go ahead and do that. Uh, my list on the beacons, if you wanted to tip me, give me a little tippy to do da, give me a hot dog and a handshake. I'll have that in my beacons. That'll be on my on my social soon. Uh, you will be able to find me uh, not only at uh, King of Sports, but we got Hype and Glory in Texarkana. You got uh, Advanced Pro Wrestling in Alvarado. Uh, I'm hoping to go uh, be a part of this uh, Sadie Hawkins thing that DFW got going on. I don't know what's been announced yet, but I'm hoping to be a part of that. Um, we got uh, Rampage Wrestling every other month in Lubbock and Abilene and Seymour and Midland, all of West Texas. We got a lot of things happening with those companies. I'm trying to get out to more. So uh, if you're in the Arkansas area, Gladiator, where it is, Ozark, Arkansas, every other month, the next show for that's going to be is going to be a big one. I have a vacant Gladiator World Championship title match against Justin James. We got the Pride Champion versus the Super Heavyweight Champion of the King of Sports Alliance battling for the vacant world title. That's going to be a big match, but I can't knock Brick Savage. I can't knock Franklin Varga. On March 1st, and then I got my first cage match at Alvar in Alvarado on the 2nd. So these next few weeks, the next four to five weeks are going to be big for me, but definitely check me out on the socials. You're going to get a lot of fun. You're going to get a lot of excitement. You're going to get a lot of energy, a lot of wing eating, and you're going to have a good time whenever you look at D.L. Hartley. D.L., this has been, and this is a compliment, a dumpster fire podcast. <laughs> and for can crushers as a guy of a garbage man, it that's epic. That's that's the best you can get on, you know, on a dumpster fire podcast. You know, if somebody wants to be a dumpster fire, I know somebody named JoJo from MPX that is all about the dumpster. So you are gonna have me chilling. I'm gonna have a friend in the dumpster. All right, if we're gonna do that, because he 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 that's where he is. That's where he's at. If you don't know who JoJo is, <laughs> go look up MPX and JoJo. It's not a knock. The dumpster is one of his sacred places. I will, that's where he lives, and he gonna fight that fist. He knows how to fight. He knows how to, he knows how to punch. So it ain't just a knock at him. That's who he is. And that's all about this can crush his phenomenon is to be you. Yeah, it is. I love that. All right, guys, just stay tuned. Part two will be coming up <laughs> shortly. You're going to love this DL. Thank you for being on tonight. Thank you so much for being a part. It was a good time. It was a good fun. And I'm all about, all about the fun. 
all about the excitement. It's no gimmick. It's no ball. It's no shadow. This is me. This is who the 325 is and what the 325 represents. Hey, I'm Jenny Santana, and since everyone needs a garbage man in their life, check out Can Crusher's Wrestling Podcast. I have nowhere to start with what just happened. Oh, my God. Hype bros! And that's two people. So he's hype bros within himself. What a fun interview with Mr. 325. Did you get enough of those puns of 325? Did you get enough of the big boy? D.L. Hartley. Listen, spoiler, it's already scheduled. Part two to actually talk about his matches and his wrestling career is scheduled. It will be coming up, so pay attention. It's a little ways away, but we're just uh, we're teasing you. But unbelievable. But again, I want to reference something that we said many times on the show, and we continue to say it this year on Can Crushers, and it puts the biggest smile on our face. It started with just be you. And I'm like, oh, man, this is a perfect year. Let's continue to do this. Let's spread the love in professional wrestling. And every wrestler that's been on has kind of piggybacked that with their own you know, version of it or put a little more twist on it or anything. It's not your worth. It's not your peace. Jeez, of course, Mark, you forget that. It's not worth your peace. Yes. Yes, I love that. Again, that is so great. I just love the words that are coming out of these wrestlers' mouths this year to continue to say, live your life, have fun, screw the fuck out of everything else that's really bothering you in this world, and just live. Oh, man. By the way, chilling, thrilling, and killing? Yeah, that too. Man, this was so much fun. Could you imagine him and Keith Lee ripping it up? If you guys have not searched D.L. Hartley before you've listened to this, make sure you check out some of his matches. I, I've done some more since I've recorded the interview, but holy schmolies. It, it has been, yeah, it, I can't wait to actually talk about his matches with him, some things that he saw, and what a well-rounded human being. Now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of dad moment of the podcast from band to ballet to this to that, to football to wrestling to this to that, that's all fine and dandy. But he's got a heart of gold as well. This has been one of my favorites. This has been one of my favorites because I let him run the interview and I was just here. And that's why I love these interviews. And that's how you get to find out about wrestlers that you may not know about on the indie circuit, but guess what? Now you're going to be like, oh my God, this D.L. Hartley guy just stole the freaking show and ran with it. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. That's what I love about these spotlights. I just sat back, listened, and just engulfed everything that spewed out of his mouth. He's going to have a million people to tag, but hey, that's on his part. I'll tag the normals that I tagged, yada, yada, yada. But oh my God, I, I personally cannot wait. Until part two. So DL, shout out. We'll be talking soon. This has been amazing. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed this one. It was a dumpster fire. But those are the best podcasts. And I mean the dumpster fire in the best way. Because that's an endearing term here on Can Crushers. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can. Not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones you love them. Because you never know.